One thing to consider though, and it's something that I've never had a problem with, but I know people sort of worry about. Picture the scene. You're heading out to get your materials for a project. You've managed to get the great price from your favorite supplier. And now comes the next challenge. And it's one I face, even as a tradesman, more often than I care to uh, admit really. Yep. Um, so I can completely empathize with kind of the DIYers amongst you. And that is the difficulties associated with transporting this stuff, sheet goods, eight foot by four foot sheets, ply, OSB, MDF, whatever it is. If you're trying to shift those around and you've got a Mini Cooper or a Ford Fiesta, I've only got a small van and that is a challenge, particularly for sheet goods when they're in their sort of eight before state. Now roof racks are an option, not so much on a car because they tend to be just two bars really for full size sheet goods, particularly if they're the thin stuff, like four, six mil, eighth inch, quarter inch kind of material. Um, unless they're really secured down well, they will flap around in the breeze, you go down to your carriageway, the freeway, the wind gets underneath them and it'll lift them up and I've seen them snap in half before and just go sailing off down the, uh, down the road. Now, like I said, I've only got a small van, and although I can fit long lengths, I can't fit full size sheets in the back. What I do, I get my supplier to cut the material down for me. Why have a dog and bark yourself? They might have a, a big table saw set up in their, their yard or a panel saw. Sometimes they might have a panel saw set up on a wall and they'll cross cut and rip cut full size sheets. Even the really big three meter by meter and a half sheets, they can cut those quite comfortably as well. Even the places like Lowe's, B&Q, Home Depot, uh, Wix, they will have these facilities as well. Now many places will charge, particularly in the DIY setting. Um, some places will have like up to two or three cuts and then it's so many pence, or so many cents per cut after that. But you know, if you're getting a few cuts done and you can't transport it anyway, that's a minimal cost that far outweighs the hassle of trying to transport it or cut it in the car park or whatever it is you're trying to do. I've always found they either don't charge, particularly if you're lucky enough to be a relatively frequent customer, or they just waive the charge because they can't be bothered to write it on the ticket or whatever. And like I said, that minimal charge, easily worth the, uh, the ease of transport, and it's far less than a delivery charge as well. Now some places, they will actually sell reduced size materials. So some places you can go and you can get a half sheet, so a four foot by four foot sheet, or even my supplier will even do a two foot by eight foot sheet and some materials. Places like B&Q, they'll do a quarter sheet, four foot by two foot, and they also do like a weird two foot by six foot as well. They kind of cut a bit off the end and then rip the rest down the middle, it's a bit weird. Actually, you have to be a bit careful because they tend to be like 1800 by 600. In metric here in the UK, the dimensions for an eight foot by four foot sheet, they come as 1220 by 2440, which is eight foot and four foot. But if you've got to cut that down the middle, you can't get two foot off either side because you've got to allow for the blade. Anyway, my general building supplier, like I said, they'll actually cut down a half sheets as a choice of either eight foot by two foot or two squares. If they haven't got it on the shelf, just ask them and they'll cut it for you. This isn't true for the less popular high value sheet goods like veneered boards or birch ply, but the vast majority of their stock they'll happily cut in. So if you're looking to need say only half a sheet or less then already you can save quite a bit of money on the cost of a full sheet. One of the drawbacks that I hear a lot of the time is people saying that the stores don't look after the machines and the blades are pretty poor quality and they're all rubbish and the, the cuts are rough and poor quality. I've found over the years it really does depend, just like so many things, boils down to how you treat the place. It's all about building up relationships with that supplier. And if you're worried about the quality of the cuts, just incorporate them into the measurements you give the guy to cut. At the end of the day, are you asking him to cut your project up for you that you've just got to assemble, or are you looking to get that huge sheet back to your workshop? I actually have never found that these places are that poor a quality. But like I said, if that's the case, then you just allow for that in, in your measurements. Secret little ninja tip here, particularly for the DIY market, don't go in the builder's merchant at 11.30 on a Saturday, you will not be a priority. Guys want to go home, nobody likes the last minute Larry. We've all seen the builders rocking up at quarter to five, demanding stuff be delivered the next morning. Call your jets, be nice, and just go with the flow. Planning and preparation is always the key. If you need something doing like that, give the guys a few days notice. If somebody's rushing, it's because they haven't prepared. So 
just bear that in mind. So why is this useful? Um, I'm glad you asked. What has this got to do with getting free and cheap materials? Well, it kind of sets the scene and it gives you a few tips on the way. If you're thinking I never use a full sheet and I don't have space to store it anyway and I don't often use a full sheet and I don't have space either, I use my supplier. If you think about these places where these cutting services are available, throughout the course of a few days, tradesmen will go in and they'll ask for a full sheet to be cut down for a project that they've got and inevitably there will be some sort of wastage or leftover pieces that sometimes they don't want. Now for me personally, yes, it's nice to have a bit of scrap, but when you keep holding on to all the bits of scrap, it just ends up taking up space. So depending on what the material is, I might leave all the leftovers with them. If I can't use them, it's difficult to store, obviously then it becomes a burden for me. What the suppliers then tend to do is keep all these bits of leftover or unwanted bits, put them to one side because they can use them around the branch, either as packaging or as stickers between boards or, or whatever. Tuck them away in a little corner somewhere, a rack, scrap wood. And it can be a real gold mine at times, depending on what tradesmen have been in for what bits that they need for their projects. Great for picking up bits for jigs, and stuff like that because you only want small bits, absolutely perfect. So if you go to places like Home Depot, Lowe's, B&Q, anywhere that's got these cutting facilities, somewhere in that branch, usually near that saw, there will be some kind of stash of offcuts. Material basically that's already been sold to somebody previously that they were looking to get rid of. And what they generally do is, certainly for my supplier, it's usually a pound a piece. And they just take however many pieces and they're right on the ticket. And even then, depending if there's a lot, I might take a handful or I might just be buying other things and they just let me have it. Probably the best price you will ever pay for it. Go and have a look around these places, literally it can be a total gold mine and like I say, you only just asked a nominal fee. This is generally my first port of call if I need to make like router templates or jigs or something like that. There'd be a few videos out on making router jigs so this is generally my source for that sort of stuff. In the meantime, I'd be interested to know if you've used this tactic for materials before and how you got on, um, or maybe even share those places for other people to benefit. Um, obviously, if you've made it this far, then you might think about subscribing, but that's completely up to you. Um, benefits you, not me. I'm not into all that. Um, you might not even speak English and have no idea what I'm saying.